Wasn't that a fun piece? <laughs> kind of makes you want to get a tap dance is what I told her. I said, I love that. It's a great one. Hey, this is the day the Lord has made. Oh, and we always have so much to rejoice and be glad in that we're here together. We're rejoicing and glad that we have our friends on Facebook Live as well as watching the recordings uh, later this afternoon as well as on YouTube and uh, Channel 6. Thank you to Epworth for broadcasting us on your Channel 6. Glad to have everybody here with us, especially glad to have some visitors with us. Invite you all to find, uh, as everybody, find our friendship pads, fill them out, pass them down so we have a record of your visit with us this morning. And while you're doing that, I'm going to turn it over to Carolyn, who's got some announcements for us. Good morning, First Christian. Good morning. On your back of your bulletin, you will see the that we have a board meeting right after service. All board members are encouraged to attend. Wednesday, there will be no uh, stitch of love or Bible study or choir practice, but I do have to brag a minute. We have 49 little red hats knitted and crocheted, mm. and we're going to finish them up and mail them on the 15th of December. So we may have 60 or 70, which will be a nice um, number. Um, also, you'll want to know that the office will close at noon on Wednesday and be closed Thursday and Friday for Thanksgiving. Next Sunday is the congregational meeting. Uh, everyone needs to come, be here. It won't take long, I understand. Um, anyone else have any more? Oh, and you will want to be sure and be here on the 5th of December for the uh, combined choir uh, concert. Um, it'll be at 2 o'clock here at the church, and you'll want to come early and get a good seat. Anyone else have any joys or announcements? Uh, where'd you go? Paul Kruger has some. Uh, little sack of tomatoes back in the back if you would like some um, by the, the uh, table going out. And also there you'll see the secret place for the winter months, and you can pick one of those up. Anyone else have any joys or announcements? All right, if I see none, then let's greet each other in Christian love.
Good morning. Let's remain standing as we sing hymn number 718, Come Ye Thankful People Come. And you can also look up at the screen if you'd rather. Will you join with me in the call to worship? God reigns, let the earth be glad. God's worth is truth. Let all people rejoice. Come, ye faithful people, come. Grace to you and peace from the one who, who is and was and is to come. Come, ye faithful people, come. Will you bow with me in prayer? Gracious, glorious, and omnip uh, um, amazing God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this season of Thanksgiving. We know that Thanksgiving should be every day. We know it should be our lifestyle of giving you thanks and praise. Be with us this week as we join together with family and friends and we Enjoy time together, be with all of us, give us peace, and then let us go out and bring peace and happiness and love to all your children. This we ask in your name, amen.
As you are finding your seat, I invite you as well to find the, your bulletin and find the insert that uh, is labeled announcements. And let's take a look underneath announcements at our concerns. You will see many names that remain on there that we have been praying for. Um, many of those names uh, have been on here for quite some time, but uh, we want to continue to lift them up uh, under the cancer list. The last one, Robert Gregg, which is a good friend of Becky Kruger's, um, had bone marrow tests done, and he is still awaiting results. So we continue to pray for him as he awaits those results. Um, then the rest of those on there you can read. Um, I don't have a whole lot of updates uh, other than you might notice that my stepmother's brother that we've been praying for did pass away. Um, and so we're lifting up his family, the family of Al Held. Um, also, um, Pam Witt was telling me when I came in that her cousin, uh, Steve Gentry, passed away and, uh, due to cancer as well. So we're praying for you, Pam, and your family. Um, and the ser services are pending. As some of you may have known, as you have probably saw the text messages that went out, uh, that we're praying hard for the Blasting Game family because Steve's father had fallen and had bleeding on the brain. They had surgery, but uh, on way to be by his side, Steve's mother fell and broke her nose. So uh, we're praying for both of your parents, Steve, uh, and you as well as you be by their side. But uh, the surgery was successful, and everybody is, is healing um, also, we're uh, lifting up in our prayers, uh, Jimmy and Maxine Dyer, who are very, uh, they, they had both had COVID and are very weak and not doing too good. So we want to pray for them that they find their strength. Are there any other updates or additions I need to add to the list? Okay, seeing none, then let us join our hearts and minds together as we go before our Lord in this time of prayer. O ruler of the universe, creator of all worlds, giver of life, we gather as your own people to praise you and to marvel at your goodness to us. Bring us back from our scattered lives and fragmented loyalties to shelter as your fold. Assure us once more of your loving care and teach us again that we may bear witness to your truth, to the entire world. For you are the great shepherd of humanity. Teach us, teach us anew to care for one another, to be just and merciful, to probe the spiritual depths for the connections which is eternal. May the faithful witness of Jesus the Christ draw us into communion with you and unite us into your service a service of care and compassion that leads us to create lists of concerns as well as joys. Lists that are incomplete, but we lift them to you anyway. We print them, we speak them, and we let some that just live in our hearts for they're special to us as all of your children are special to you. Hear our prayers for our brothers and sisters. Speak now to us a new message, a message of hope and of love, a message of what does it truly mean to have a king or to have a Lord and Savior? For it is in and through our Lord and Savior's name, the name of Jesus the Christ, that we pray. Amen. I invite our deacons at this time to make their way to the back of the sanctuary as we prepare to receive our offering. We have a couple of things going on in our offering this morning. We'll do the first one is today's the last day of the Operation Christmas Child. We have so many filled boxes over there uh, that are going to be shipped out. I'm going to take them tomorrow uh, over to the gathering place to be united with all the other Operation Christmas Child boxes, and they're going to be shipped over to third world countries where little boys and girls can open them up and, and find Christmas that they had maybe have never experienced before. 
So um, I thought it'd be appropriate for us to have a special blessing of our boxes and they be united with the others. So if you don't mind, let's have prayer. Gracious God, we are thankful that you have blessed us with the opportunity to bless others. As these little boys and girls open up these boxes uh, over in another country, people we'll probably never meet. May they find blessings this holiday, for we know, God, as we went and purchased or made the items that we put in these boxes, what a blessing we received from that as well. Watch over these boxes as they travel across the globe into the arms and hands of our, your little children, in Christ's name, amen. Another part of our service, to our, our special offering today, is the second part of our Thanksgiving offering, uh, in which we focus on higher education. And so, um, as I mentioned before, the, the special offering goes to help scholarships for seminary students as well as college students. One of our biggest colleges is right down south of us in Fort Worth, Texas, TCU. So some of the students that benefit from this want to say a thank you to you. Hey! We're TCU Disciples on campus. And we just wanted to say a big thank you to all of you for your continued support of our ministry and academic endeavors here at TCU. We truly, truly appreciate it. Here are a few students who are going to give a few words about what TCU and your contributions mean to them. Hello, my name is Jonah, and for the last three years I've been to Doc, and it's definitely equipped everyone I know to make the world a better place and be awesome people. Doc has been my second family at TCU, and every week I look forward to each one of our events, and it is such a fun time to be there and have fun with everyone around me. Hi, my name is Gabriella. I'm a senior at TCU, and my favorite thing about my college experience so far has been getting to meet and form deep relationships with other Disciples students. I also love that our campus ministry, Disciples on Campus, is so connected to other ministers and churches in the Texas region. Hello, my name is William Furrow, and I'm a junior here at Texas Christian University. And along with making many friends through Disciples on Campus, I've also been able to make relationships with my professors on campus, furthering my education and making me so thankful that I was able to choose a university where that was a possibility. Hi, my name is Anna, um, and I chose TCU because when I was in high school, I really loved going to camp events. I was on leadership team, and I just made so many great connections through Disciples Ministries, and when I toward TCU, it just felt like the perfect place to make those new connections with Disciples Ministries. And overall, it's just been an amazing experience and I've met so many awesome people through Disciples on Campus. Hi, my name is Dylan Wiley and I chose TCU because it was a place that I could go to that already had a strong Disciples core at it and a lot of friends that I knew going into it from various regional ministries that I was a part of, as well as it was an opportunity for me to major in religious studies um, around many fellow disciples and explore potentially pursuing ministry. I chose to come to TCU because I knew there would be a disciples religious connection here that I wouldn't be able to find anywhere else. And that would be super important to me as I discerned my call to ministry and decided to study religion in my college experience. And as I've been here, it's just been such an amazing opportunity to get to know so many disciples and become so much more devoted to my faith because I have people from the same denomination surrounding me, not only in disciples on campus, but also in my religion classes that help me and motivate me to be the best version of myself. Another way that we can make a difference in the lives of others. Think of these things and others as the plates are passed.
Indeed, God, we pause to give you thanks. Because you have blessed us in so many special ways, we give thanks that we have another opportunity to be blessed by giving and sharing from what you have already given to us. Bless our effort to make a difference in this world for your glory. In Christ's name, amen. You may be seated. Our scripture this morning is found on page 107 of the New Testament in your pew Bibles, or it'll be up on the screen, but out of respect for the reading of the word, will you please stand? John 18, 33 through 37. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus and asked him, are you the king of the Jews? 
Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I'm not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But it is as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus said, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The word of God for the people of God. When we hear the word king, so many images pop up into our minds, don't they? I mean, you think of this, this stately person uh, sitting on a throne, the king of England, so to speak, but most of us have only had a queen of England for so long. But you think about these images uh, of a person who's in battle on a white horse with drawn sword or someone sitting on a throne with a scepter. Sometimes we think of a, a king as the, the mighty piece on a chessboard, the, the big stately piece. Although you quickly find when you play chess that it's the queen that seems to be the more powerful piece. But that, that's, a, that's a sermon for another day. Uh, but we do think about this huge crown with the jewels and the, the red robe with the, the white fur around it. And uh, just this awesome image of a person, a picture of a king. Today is called Christ the King Sunday. It marks the last Sunday of the liturgical year because next Sunday is when we start Advent. The beginning of our next liturgical year. It's hard to believe Advent's around the corner, isn't it? So I'm so excited. I love that time of year. But we don't find a lot of images of Jesus in the scriptures, uh, an image of king like I talked about. There's no description of Jesus having a long flowing robe or a big uh, crown on his head. But he was called king. He was called king by many people for many different reasons. Everyone seemed to want, I don't know, needed him to be king. So let's talk about some of those. His early followers, after witnessing some of the miracles that he had performed when they were convinced that he was the son of God, quickly made move to make him their king. And it says in the scripture that he quietly slipped away because he didn't come to be their king. But we can't blame them. It's tempting to, to mark somebody as a leader, especially when it's someone who has a knowledge that you don't or possesses skills that you don't. You just kind of want to let them take lead. Um, recently, we got a whole new soundboard system and the whole thing all redone. And, and John, who Crystal uh, in, uh, hooked us up with, was up there and answered every one of my questions and explained things that I didn't even know it could do. I mean, I was like, well, yeah, you just turn the volume up. And uh, as you can hear, sometimes it's not that simple. Uh, but John, he could tell you oh, exactly what you need to do. Is, is, is it the, the upscale part of this, whatever, downscale of this? Well, uh, he was so knowledgeable, I just kind of really wanted to say, let me go to the board and say, can we just hire you to be our tech person? And then you could just stay up there, we could do whatever. But, you know, we, we wouldn't do that. But it's so tempting to put somebody in that leadership position. Say, you know what, you do it, I'll just get in line, I'll follow you. There's something to be said about a need of people to have a leader like that. To make the choices. And that all we have to do is just follow those choices. But Jesus was more interested in not leading them from the front, but to be one of them, to lead from inside the family. He often referred to us as his brothers and sisters on purpose. Not a top down like a king would do. But kings come and go. But a movement, a movement could last I don't know, a couple of thousand years and still go. He was not interested in wearing their crown and their robe. 
But it wasn't just them. The Jewish leaders, they needed him to be a king. You see, the Jewish leaders weren't kings themselves. They weren't the Jewish leaders. They led not by title, but they led by influence and by power of their office. The ones that have uh, the religious answers of their days, and it, people would come to them from all over to understand the Bible and how they can connect with God. For years, they have been supplying their followers with all these answers. And then Jesus comes along and says, you know what? They might not have it all right. Here's another way of looking at God. Well, they couldn't have that. Doubt in their leaders began to grow. If they were wrong about this, then what else could they be wrong about? My freshman year in college, I took algebra and trig combination class. And my teacher, because it was a freshman class, was a graduate student himself, just, you know, working on his master's degree. So they had him in there teaching us this uh, algebra and trig class. And um, I didn't realize this at the time, but when a graduate student is a teacher, they're also being graded by someone over them. Well, when he gave us our first test, and um, I think uh, I, maybe two-thirds of the class all flunked it, and the others that didn't flunk barely passed it, he got in trouble. <laughs> so his teacher made him go back to our class and go over the test to find out what we did wrong. On the very first question, he got stumped. And he worked on it for hours, and there's like, well, no, that didn't work. No, that didn't work. He goes, you know what? I'm going to take this back, and then tomorrow we're going to go over, you know, the correct answer. And we're all like, wait a minute. We didn't get to take it home and work on it some more. After that, we began to lose faith in him as our leader. Because if he's wrong about that, what else is he going to teach us that could be wrong too? What if what Jesus is saying is right? That means our leaders Maybe they're not right, and they couldn't have that. If they were going to maintain their power, then they needed to get rid of Jesus. But they were not allowed to kill Jesus just because he was challenging their authority. They had to get someone else to do their dirty work. And Rome couldn't care any less about their problems, about their religious teachings, or their authority. They had to get away for Jesus to be on Rome's radar. So they de needed him to declare that he was a king. They needed Jesus to be king. Then he'd be a threat to Rome. But then comes in Pilate. Pilate had all this authority, but he also had rules he had to follow. The lowly Jews and their little problem going on meant nothing to him, meant nothing to Rome. In order for him to intervene for the Jewish people, he needed Jesus to be declared a king, which would be a threat to the Roman Empire. But Jesus doesn't claim this title. He says his kingdom is, is not of this world. Watching Pilate and his dilemma, we see that he wants nothing to do with this whole situation. He wants it all to just go away. We want to go to Pilate, don't we? We want to go to Pilate and tell him, hey, guess what? Jesus is no threat to you at all. His kingdom is no threat to Rome. We want to stop all of Pilate's actions. We want to warn him, these choices that you're about to make will record who you are in history. We want to reach out to Pilate to protect Jesus. But one commentator put it best. He said, Jesus did not come into this world to be protected. Jesus came to show us a new kind of king. And we know as it was recorded that the Jewish leaders won and Pilate declared Jesus a threat. Even though he tried to avoid it many times and try to find a door, a loophole, try to find some way to get out of it, he was trapped as well and Jesus was declared a king. Before him stood a man, Jesus of Nazareth, king of the Jews. But that wasn't good enough for the chief priests either. The scriptures tell us that they went to Pilate and said, no, 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 no. We don't want you to say he's king of the Jews. We want you to, to declare that he says he's king of the Jews. And Pilate said, no, you got what you asked for. You wanted a king, you got one. He's your king, king of the Jews. They had their king that's now hanging on a cross between two thieves awaiting his death. 
Christ the King. So many needed Jesus to be king. A crown-wearing, robe-flowing king. It's kind of tempting to put Jesus in that light. You remember the story of the Danish sculptor who was sculpting out a, a, an image of Jesus that he wanted to be recorded in all history. He, he sculpted him out of clay, and he made Jesus this ominous statue, this big statue of a guy with his head held high and his arms outstretched, a powerful, beautiful sculpture of Jesus the Christ. And he was proud of his creation. And then he went on home, but one of his workers had left the window open, and it was cracked a little bit. And as the night went on and fog came in, and it came into his workshop, and the fog got into the uncured clay. And the statue he had made began to be filled with that moisture. When he got in the next morning to see his sculpture, he said it was ruined. The clay now... That massive head was hung down low, looking down at the people. Those massive arms had drooped down, and no longer was his statue this massive king, but a humble servant who now looks at the people, ready to embrace them. And he realized from his heart, Jesus didn't come to be king. So he renamed the statue, Come Unto Me. Christ was never a king. He failed at being a king. He was tried and, and, and drugged through the streets and mocked and hung on a cross to die. A king? A boy born in a manger with sheep and, and other animals and goats and crucified on a cross between two thieves. And yet, if you look at the history and after all these years, Guess who is still being followed? It isn't the Roman emperor. Those who were his accusers are all gone, but yet Jesus still has followers. Herod and Pilate are gone and just in our history books. The Roman soldiers are gone. The Roman empire itself is gone. And I still find it so ironic that the head of the Catholic Church is in Rome today. Over all these years, kings have risen and have fallen. Perhaps it's a great thing that Christ is not a king. Because if we're honest with ourselves, we too wish for Christ to be a king. We want a person who will tell us what to do and what to believe. And then we all to do is just follow it. We want a leader who's going to provide for us and pit barriers up to keep evil out and keep us in and have an us and a them type of situation. We want to be a part of a kingdom with those walls of security. We want a king who will lead, and all we have to do is mindlessly follow. But Jesus came to show us a different kind of leadership, a different kind of king. Not a fluffy red jeweled crown, but one made of throne, thorns, a crown of sacrifice. Not a long flowing robe, but a flow of blood, willing to give up everything for you and for me. Not a throne, but a cross to inspire us. Following a king is mindless, but following a Christ is heart-filled. So on this Christ the King Sunday, let us be reminded that Jesus never dictated, but believed, believed in us, that not only would we follow his teachings, but we too would lead others to follow as well. They needed Christ to be the king. We don't need Christ to be something as limiting as a king. We need Christ to be our Lord and Savior, Son of the living God. Amen? Amen. Amen. I invite our elders and deacons to make their way to the back of the sanctuary as we prepare to receive our Holy Communion. At some point, this green decides to come down when it wants to.
And as they go back to prepare uh, for us to have our Holy Communion, I have to remind you, um, whenever I, I, I hear, uh, for years, whenever I hear Christ the King Sunday, there's a commercial that pops in my mind. Um, do y'all remember Imperial Butter? Yes. You remember that? I don't even know. Do they still even make that stuff anymore? They do? Well, when you take a bite, does a crown appear on your head anymore? Remember that? You take a bite, doo, 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 remember that, the crown? I should have found a copy of that. I'm sorry. But, you know, I just thought those were the coolest commercials of that kid. They just take a piece of their toast and take a boop, boop, and the, the crown comes in. I just think that's neat. That, that was their, their motto was that uh, if you have their imperial butter, that you will feel like a king. Well, you know what? We are God's commercial. Let's get out in the world and tell them when you come in and you're not going to have butter, but you're going to have some communion bread and communion juice, you're going to feel like a king because the king of us all, the leader of us all has called us to the table of remembrance to feast and to dine under his leadership that tells us that each and every one of us is important enough that we too can feel as if we are a king for all are invited to the table to partake. As we prepare to receive our Holy Communion, I'll turn it over to Crystal, who's going to lead us in our communion song. Let's remain seated and sing One Bread, One Body.
It was there while Jesus was gathered with the disciples at that first last supper that he took the bread from the table. He lifted toward heaven to give thanks. But this time he took the bread and he said, this is no longer ordinary bread for this is my body that I give unto you. Eat of it in remembrance of me. In a like manner, he poured out some wine. And as he did, he said, this is no longer ordinary wine, for this is my life-giving blood that I pour out freely for you, so that you can understand what true forgiveness is all about, so that we can form another covenant, this one based on love. He said, drink of this in remembrance of me, for as often as we eat of the bread and we drink of the cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Let us pray. Oh God, creator of all that we are, you gave us our lives, you gave us your world, and you gave us your son. You watched as he was beaten, tortured, and as his body was broken on that cross so that we might be forgiven of our sins. Keep us mindful of and forever thankful for this sacrifice and help our hearts to accept his pain and suffering as we eat this bread in memory of him. Eternal God, our lives are filled with the anticipation of the Thanksgiving holiday and all of its joy, then followed by, by, by Black Friday with all of its craziness. <laughs> help us to pause for a moment so that our hectic schedules may be silenced, that our ears, our hearts, and our spirits may be receptive to you. This week, we will gather around a table that is fit for a king. Today, we are invited to this table that was prepared by a king. We wait upon you to bless this cup, to enrich our lives by helping us to remember Jesus dying on the cross, to be aware of Christ's living presence, to have the hope that the future is Christ and that, our, that Christ is in our future. We pray in the name of Christ, our risen Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. O God of love and of mercy, who calls your children to gather at the table of remembrance, we're thankful for the invitation. We also know, God, some of our church members are physically unable to join us around the table. We're thankful for the elders as they extend the table of remembrance to the, our homebound. And also thankful, God, that as those that are gathering virtually, that they too have their elements ready to go, that we can all break bread together and drink cup together and celebrate the life of our Lord and Savior, your Son that you sent to live among us and to teach us how to live and how to love. Out of remembrance of Him, we offer back one of the prayers that He taught us so long ago. As we blend our voices together, may your ears find it pleasing as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And do not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. What a wonderful morning of worship uh, being together has been. We're thankful for everybody that's been here, as well as those of you that um, are joining us online and virtually. That's uh, really great. Matter of fact, if there's anybody here who would like to be a member of this congregation by transfer from another or to make public your confession of faith for the first time, then as we're singing our closing song, it'll be a great time for you to come down and uh, meet with me, and, and we will welcome you into the fellowship. Those of you who are watching virtually, just reach out to me uh, by email or whichever way you want to, and we can talk about the same. You don't have to be here physically to do that, because we love to have everybody be a part of the First Christian Church of Chickasha. For those of you that are elders and deacons and board uh, officers, we have a board meeting immediately following worship down in the fellowship hall, and Janice will lead us in that. Um, she's not Janice the king, she's Janice the board chair. So, uh, but we'll be down in the fellowship hall for that immediately following uh, worship. So, which means it's time for our annual congregational meeting, as Carolyn announced, uh, next Sunday. So, make plans to stay after worship next Sunday. Um, it doesn't usually take too long. We'll uh, cover that uh, really quickly where we have to vote on the next year's officers and budgets. And um, we're going to have a small change in our bylaws and add a sentence. So, that's all going on uh, next Sunday. So, uh, also want to say a special thank you to Jan and Crystal once again for the beautiful uh, organ piano piece. That's just so neat when you all do that. It's always so neat. Okay, so um, as we uh, depart from this place, uh, we have our closing uh, hymn, which uh, Crystal's going to lead us in. Let's stand and sing hymn number 715, Now Thank We All Our God. 